Hi everybody, Allison Morrow here in front of my washing machine. I figured it would be better to actually do this report inside my washing machine, but it is just too small. We live in kind of like a tiny house and so we have a tiny washing machine. I guess I could do the whole video like this, but it just feels kind of weird. We are going to make a big leap from opioid muscles to our laundry detergent. And we're gonna do that first by talking about how the opioid epidemic has now made its way into our shellfish. Scientists believe that because folks are not metabolizing all of the opioids they're taking, they then urinate and flush their waste down the toilet, and that goes through the wastewater treatment plants, essentially unscathed, then into our waterways, and right into the tissue of our shellfish. The research was done in part by a scientist at the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife named Jennifer Langsbury. She's a biologist who has been testing mussels for many years, and she actually says, though the opioid issue is getting all the attention, it's really not the biggest concern for scientists. What we found the most of at all 18 of the sites that we analyzed was those, they're called alkylphenol ethoxylates, and they come from surfactants and detergents, and they're in other products. And they're in the Puget Sound, and they likely are having these estrogenic effects on, you know, on the reproductive systems of the fishes and maybe the shellfish out there. Jennifer uses the word estrogenic a lot. So an estrogenic effect means that the chemical is able to get into the animal system and affect the animal as if it's receiving extra estrogen in its system. So uh, for some fishes, it might cause female fish to become reproductively active before they're ready. For male fish, it may start to feminize them. Um, we have um, evidence of male fish in the Puget Sound uh, starting to produce egg yolk proteins, which male fish should not be producing. Okay, so male fish are creating egg yolk protein, which is actually what female fish are supposed to do. So we have these endangered salmon and they're having potential survival issues because our products have an estrogenic effect on them, basically turning the male fish into female fish. We are putting our wildlife through hormone therapy. The problem though is that that therapy is actually not achieving the results that we would like, which is the proliferation of the species itself. So we found the most that, and then a lot of antibiotics and a lot of these uh, antidepressant medications, Prozac, Zoloft, Citalopram. Talking to Jennifer was like totally depressing because it feels like our fish and everything else that lives in the water is fighting this deluge of human waste. PCBs have been known to have estrogenic effects, synthetic estrogens that are coming from birth control. Um, there, there are other um, uh, phthalates that are in plastics, um, plasticizers, they have estrogenic effects too. So, so there's kind of a number of chemicals that have those estrogenic effects. And then the antidepressants exacerbate that problem because they have this synergistic effect and they make the estrogenic compounds more active in the fish. And we're making it worse with things like detergent. A really simple solution is just buy detergent that's more eco-friendly. And I guess what I wanna say is, please start thinking about your choices. Your choices matter. Your choices matter. I use seventh generation for my laundry. I also use it for my dishwashing soap. I've tried changing my laundry detergent, my dishwashing soap, my hand soap in the bathroom, my shampoo, my conditioner, my cosmetics, my lotion. It's unbelievable where all of this stuff hides. We may be having an impact on the environment that you can't really see that you can't see naked yeah eye. absolutely so you know you, once you get into the water you can't see these chemicals floating around in the water but that doesn't mean that they're not there and they're you know they're likely or potentially having effect on the fish and shellfish you know some of the chemicals that get into the water from our detergents have estrogenic effects so they're affecting um, the estrogen in the fish and that could affect their reproduction some of the other chemicals have synergistic effects like the uh, antidepressants can make the detergents more estrogenic and so you know you have a cocktail mixture floating around in the Puget Sound and we're not really sure what all of those effects are but with the muscle monitoring we can start to at least see what's out there. I will say that at least what it taught me is that some of these bigger problems that kind of paralyze us are actually sometimes less important than the little things that all of us are doing day in and day out. So if we were to just change one thing or two things that maybe 
aren't big things, but they're small things we do a lot of that actually we might make a big difference. And so I hope that's a takeaway of this video that, hey, there's always something that we can do. Actually taking a look at our own lifestyle, voting with our dollar, and also changing our habits to be better protectors and better sustainers of the wonderful environment that we love so dearly and frankly depend on. Because let's be honest, if male fish and female fish cannot reproduce, then we're gonna have a problem with our dinner plates. I am going to start putting clothes instead of myself in the washing machine use my seventh generation detergent. If you like the channel and you want more updates on this kind of stuff, subscribe. Again, I'm Allison Mara. See you next time.